My name is Lindsay O'Dell, I'm Director of the Graduate School at The Open University. I'm here today with three students who've undertaken their vivas remotely since March this year, uh, when the pandemic has meant that PhD and professional doctorate vivas are undertaken remotely. We're going to talk about their experiences and their top tips for students who will also be undertaking their examination remotely. So first, if students can introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Sue Main. Um, I was doing my PhD in um, Wells faculty. I was looking at creativity as a way to express chronic pain and used online exhibitions to do that. Hi, my name is Daniel Haslam. I've um, recently completed my PhD in the Faculty for Business and Law, specifically in the Centre for Voluntary Sector Leadership, because my interest is in the voluntary sector and I researched how the voluntary sector worked collaboratively with the NHS. And uh, my name's Claire Saunders, and uh, I was a, a, an EdD student in the Wells faculty, uh, and my uh, research was around creating a writing community um, in a new university, so looking at how academics' writing practices um, can be developed uh, in a teaching-focused university. To start with, I'd like to talk about how you prepared for your Viva. So in some ways, it's very similar to preparation that students will always undertake for uh, their Viva, but in other ways, it's obviously very different. So it'd be really helpful to hear your experiences of how you prepared. Um, I mean, I did all the usual kind of preparation in terms of going back through my thesis and, and the sorts of stuff that you would do, I guess, for any Viva. In terms of online, um, I, I had two preparatory sessions. We just kind of went through some potentially tricky questions, but again, with a real focus on um, how's this looking online? Can you can you hear us OK? When there's a pause, don't worry about it. You know, it may well be that there's a pause there end as well. So I think particularly dealing with uh, the logistics of being um, remote, uh, but trying to kind of engage with your examiners, a couple of practice runs. Um, they don't have to be full vivas. Uh, they can be just kind of conversations, but just trying out the medium for me was a really um, helpful way uh, of preparing, I think. For me, the, the practice that I had with my, my supervisors was really, really valuable. And um, I was really, I was quite nervous for the for the practice, a lot more nervous than I ended up being for my my actual viva. So, so it, it had it had value for me both in terms of, you know, that that um, the practice of talking about the thesis and and the the kinds of questions that might come up, but just also sort of an emotional benefit, just to sort of, sort of get me used to that kind of environment, um, because being online is quite different to to being face to face um and and just sort of the, the formality of the process as well so yeah that 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 practice was really really beneficial that's really interesting um that you say you were more nervous for the practice because um the day before mine i actually had a practice run with um a lecturer who very kindly read the thesis and did a mock a mock viva with me and we set it up so that um, it was actually at the same time of day that the real thing was going to be, um, which was kind of just helpful for me to kind of know how things worked and how they were going to look in terms of the, the light at the time and that kind of stuff. Um, so that was really useful. Um, but also I was so much more nervous for that session than I actually ended up being the next day. And I think it kind of really helped me um, to get all of that out of the way and um, to kind of work through some of that anxiety. And I think I, I kind of managed to peak my anxiety the day before, which meant that <laughs> on the day I was then feeling a bit kind of calmer and a bit more confident about how to deal with it. But it was that kind of thing that was that was really useful and just kind of working through those nerves in advance, really, um, that was definitely valuable. How did you set your room up uh, where you had your exam? Uh, what, what what did you do to make sure that you were comfortable in the space that you that you took your Viva in? One of the things that I did was wear the same clothes um, for my practice as I did for the for the uh, the actual Viva. And the one of the main reasons I did that was so I could see where I was going to be, what the room was going to look like, and what I looked like talking about um, my research. So so that was a really important thing. Um, and some of the tips that you, you you see about video calls that are around at the moment about the height of your camera and the light in the room and all that kind of thing. Uh, but also, I think that's one of the big benefits, actually, of, of doing, doing your Viva online is that you have more control over that kind of thing. Well, hopefully you have more control in, in theory. Um, so things like uh, where you are, um, the temperature in the room, which can be a big, big thing. I know certainly the office on campus 
tends to be really warm so I get quite hot in there and I think in a in a stressful environment it might have been a bit a uh, bit sticky in, in more ways than one uh, if I was doing it there so I was quite I was quite um quite thankful to be at home in, in an environment that I knew and and that was really good for me yeah I think one of the advantages of taking it online was like you say that control over the environment that you have um and, you know, behind my desk is a wall. And on that wall, I had post-it notes that said things like breathe. Um, you know, your research is interesting. Um, you know, just just kind of things that my supervisors had said to me. Um, I, I just had those as little notes. I guess if I'd gone in um, to a physical um, Viva, I would have had maybe some of those things written in a notebook. Um, but having them just in front of me on the wall was a really helpful thing. So I think, you know, it's it's OK to arrange the environment in a way that's going to work um, to your benefit. Uh, and you don't have that opportunity in the face to face uh, physical one, but you do have that in a remote one. Um, so I think it's worth just kind of spending some time in the room and thinking about how to set it up so it's going to work for you. Yeah, I, I found that um, I did the Viva prep at the same pl- position um, in the room where I knew I was going to be sitting the Viva. So it was almost kind of um, getting my mind set into that kind of, that's where I do my Viva kind of stuff. Whatever you can do to kind of keep yourself kind of thinking that this is where I, I do it or this is what I'm going to wear. And um, it, sound, it might sound silly, but um, wearing proper shoes and not your slippers because it actually puts you into a different mindset, like like dressing up professionally. Um, you know, people kind of joking about working from home and having, you know, the top half kind of dressed and wearing pyjamas on the bottom half and things. But, you know, actually, you know, I yeah, I had a proper dress on. I did my hair and my makeup and I had proper shoes on. And it just, it, it did help get me in that mindset. Were there other things you did to, um, to prepare for the Viva uh, and any nerves that you might have? Mine was nice because mine was early in the morning. It was 10 o'clock. So, you know, so I tried to make things as as normal as possible. The other thing that I did was I had a, a brief conversation with the chair of the panel about two weeks before, and that was purely about logistics. So the, the kind of knowing the logistics of the way the Viva would work um, just really helped me to know exactly what was happening. So I think... Um, I think a conversation beforehand like that could be a really helpful thing, just so you've got the kind of technicalities and the logistics worked out, because then you're not worried about those. <clears throat> and my supervisor said that to me the day before. She said, you know, Claire, just make sure that the bottom line is the technology is not your responsibility. Uh, that's the responsibility of the chair of the panel. So you just need to focus on answering the questions and talking about your research. And I think that was a really helpful way of managing nerves. Actually, you know, I I didn't have to worry about everything else. If it went wrong, they were going to be responsible for fixing it. Um, And so just having those logistical conversations beforehand, I think for me was a really helpful way of managing nerves. Yeah, I did a similar thing where um, we had a practice Skype call with the chair and the supervisor who was going to be observing. So we we went through Mm -hmm. the kind of how we were going to be called back into the the call as well after the examiners had had their conversation. Um, So in some respect, having it from home was great because it meant that I I knew I already had the suitable chair and everything else that I could set up how I needed it. But we had to work out the logistics of how to sort out the rest breaks, um, especially because things like I wasn't always aware of when I needed to take a break and we kind of had realized that and so we'd realized that the supervisor might have needed to make some kind of non-verbal cues to the chair that she should prompt to ask me if I need a break so then trying to do that I work out how to do that over Skype wasn't straightforward um but we we kind of had a run through and a discussion about that so so definitely having having a kind of practice quick call I mean it was only five ten minutes but a quick call with the chair and the supervisor on Skype beforehand just to run over those logistics and check that everything's working that was a really valuable helpful experience yeah I, I definitely agree with that as well when when we had the um the I guess the tech practice uh, uh in in comparison with the content practice uh, we actually ended up having to change the the technology that we were going to use which uh, if that happened on the day, I imagine would have been a bit of a bit of a panicky situation. So, so yeah, really, really valuable to have that as well. And also for me to, although I'd met my external examiner, we didn't really know each other that well. And I'd be very, very surprised if she knew who I was. <laughs> um, so that was really good just so we could all meet each other as well and see each other. And um, other preparation stuff. Um, one of the things was I, I was working full time as well around my Viva. And one of the things that I did was make sure I, t- I booked the day off work. So around it, I didn't have any of that 
pressure. I thought at one point, I thought, well, I can just do my Bible for a couple of hours and then go back and do some some other work. But actually, I was really grateful to my my previous self that I'd, I'd, I'd had the foresight to book a day off because, uh, yeah, the lead up was, although I got up at the same time and everything, um, it was just a very, very, very different day, as you can probably imagine. I was really grateful to have that that time as well. In preparation for the Viva, do you have any tips um, or experiences about how you manage the technology uh, before your Viva? Did you do anything in particular to prepare? So, yeah, just just kind of having that assurance is there's not not other stuff running on the laptop or the computer that you're using. Um, I live alone, but, you know, if you've got other people in the house who are using uh, who are streaming or doing calls or whatever else, then asking them for just that kind of period of time to to maybe try not to um then that's quite useful uh, on a non-technology side as well as things like switching off the the doorbell um you know those kind of things that can cause disruption as well yeah very very similar i mean i've got two um older children um who who do fairly large amounts of watching things on on screen and so they they were banned from the house for the morning basically i, I sent them out um and they they weren't allowed to come back till they'd rung to check it was <laughs> the coast was clear but actually we had a bit of a community effort went on um in that my neighbors all of whom have younger children who obviously aren't at school or weren't at school at that point um they were all told to keep quiet because the windows were going to be open because uh, it was such a hot day i think there is something there just around you know don't be afraid to make people aware um, that this is what's going on in the house at that time. Um, and, and there are some little helpful things that people can do to, to make that easier for you. So, but technology wise, definitely watch the, the streaming that's going on elsewhere in the house and, and, and try and prevent that if you can, so that the, all the bandwidth is, is available for you. I think that's the, the most um, important technicality that I think I, I made sure I'd sorted in advance. I mean, although the, I mean, the other thing was my chair of the panel had my mobile number so that if anything did go wrong with the technology, she could call me on that. So I think that exchange of phone numbers um, is a really important thing uh, in advance as well, just to make sure that um, you can be got hold of if there's a problem. Issue about that it's not your responsibility to organise all the technical side of things is a really helpful one. Um, and there are people in the room whose job it is to ensure that you can engage fully in the, the examination. Mm. Uh, that that sounds like that was helpful for you um, and would be a helpful thing to to reassure other students of. Um, so your job is to do the bit that, that you know really well, which is to talk about your thesis and to feel comfortable in the space that you're in. Um, and then there are other people around whose job it is uh, to, to support you in doing that, uh, to make sure that the medium works. Can you talk about what did you do on the day of the Viva, just before the Viva, and do you have any suggestions for students who are going through a similar thing? Uh, I I checked the technology again, so I had a practice Skype call um, with a friend just to make sure that Skype was up and running. Um, uh, glass of water, really important. In fact, I had a large, very large glass of water. You do a lot of talking um, in the Viva, and so I made sure that I had a glass of water. I was at my desk about 15 minutes before um, had Skype opened and ready. So I think that just keeping things as calm as possible um, it, beforehand and just, you know, being organised and making sure you're running to time um, can be quite helpful. And there was a little kind of chat conversation that went on in the in the Skype chat box beforehand, you know, so the, the chair just said to me, you know, are you OK? Have you got a glass of water? Uh, my supervisor was like, good morning, how are you doing? And then the examiners came on. Um, and so I think, you know, I, I have to say, I feel that the the panel um, did did everything they could to do exactly what you were saying, Lindsay, which was make sure that my job was to talk about my research and their job was to make sure that I was able to do that. Um, and I really felt that on the day. I felt that they did a really good job of um, it wasn't kind of stuffy or formal in the sense of kind of making you feel on the back foot. It was it was done in a way that enabled me. It was rigorous, um, but it was done in a way that enabled me to give of my best, I think. And I really appreciated that. In terms of kind of psyching myself up, I think because I live on my own um, and I also didn't didn't really tell people when it was because that's my coping mechanism was I didn't want hundreds of people messaging me or whatever. Um, so um, I didn't, you know, there wasn't anyone around to kind of give me a, you know, pep talk or whatever else. So um, 
my supervisor had rung me the day before and I think if I'd if I'd wanted to speak to her in the morning I could have definitely rung her before the before the vibe up. Um, but I, I got everything kind of physically set up and things and then I kind of needed to get myself kind of um, I don't know motivated or feeling more confident or whatever um, so I knew I needed to be feeling happy so I put on some music and kind of sang along to that quite loudly and sort of you know did a little bit of a dance <laughs> on my kitchen floor and um, it it really did it sounds so stupid but it really helped because I know that 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 kind of just gets me kind of happy and it it kind of helped get the energy flowing in a in a positive way rather than an anxious way. So, you know, just silly things like that really that, that were quite useful. Yeah, and that's a, a really good example of, of how doing it online is, is another big benefit because of the control you have. And I just yeah. echo the, the the point that's been made by everyone else about my, my I thought my chair was really, really good. Um she she took control of the situation and put me at ease and sort of described how everything would go and that less formal aspect as well where you know you do have people in their own environments that and the, the potential chaos that may or may not happen with kids running in or um seagulls or whatever it might be i think that's a big advantage as well because it it, it sort of takes that pressure off a little bit and it and it breaks the ice a bit as well in terms of uh, the formality of obviously the vibe itself is is, is a very formal situation and i think um, it's difficult to make comparison having not been through a face-to-face -face one in in a room, but I imagine being sat face to face with someone um, it creates a, a bit more of a sort of pressure to act in a certain way, to be a certain way in that in in that academic environment. Um, so I, I certainly found it uh, reassuring um, to to do it do it like that. One of the things as well that's been mentioned is having your supervisor as an observer, which is an option. And it's an option, whether it's face to face or, or online, and one it's one that I I took up as well, and that was useful to me on the day just to have that familiar face, someone that you've been through the whole process with um, on the call, whether you you did do whether you do the chat beforehand or whether in my case it was just the fact that they were there, um, and it just gave me that little little bit of extra confidence, I think, just to. Um, say to myself well yeah I, I know what I'm doing I know where I am I know who these people are and all that kind of thing I uh, just just going back to the thing about having the supervisor um there as an observer which I I opted for that as well and it was really helpful and I think one useful thing is to agree in advance what what you want them to do um as part of that so in the in the practice one that I'd had my other supervisor who was at that one she'd pretty pretty much to write try to write down what I'd said as far as possible in answer to the questions and we agreed that the supervisor that was there on the day would do something very similar. Um, and, and that's really helpful because um, in my case, a lot of the amendments were, um, Clay, when you answered this question, you answered that question well, and we now want you to put that into the thesis. And actually, that was made a whole lot easier by the fact that uh, you, you, you believe me, you won't remember what you said at any point in that <laughs> in that viva. Um, so to get those notes from my supervisor, which was that, you know, when they asked you this question, this is what you said. And this is the amendment they've asked for um, was really helpful. So there's probably something worthwhile about having a conversation with your supervisor beforehand and saying that this is what I would really like you to do um, in, in terms of ob observing what what does that actually look like on the day? Um, and that that just was a really helpful helpful thing um i think for me was that i then got the notes through and i could see what i'd said in response to particular questions i have been an observer for one of my students who um who's had their viva since lockdown and i've been an examiner as well so my experience from the other side of it is that because we've all experienced our vivas in person I think that there's a general sense in the academic communities about really making sure that um, as examiners, supervisors, observers and exam panel chairs, that we do everything we can to make the student feel at ease in the remote situation. So do you have any tips uh, about your experience for other students about your experiences during the Viva? So how, how was it during the Viva? Um, anything that worked particularly well or that you'd recommend for other students? 
So I think uh, one of the things, I mean, so you talked about having rest breaks planned in advance. I think it's really important to say that was on offer on the day as well. Not, 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 you know, regular ones, but I was told very clearly that if I needed to pause, then that would be absolutely fine. It was a really hot day. It was a, it was a well over an hour. Um, it's quite intense. So I think, um, and associated with that is, is, is in the same way, I think that you would in a face to face, it was okay to say, could you repeat that question or to have a pause before you answered the question um and i think you know that feels a bit more awkward um remotely but i think it's really important that you just go do you know what if i was face to face i would be able to do this and also i i am um, in my rehearsal one, I realised that when they asked a two-part question, um, I would often not remember part of the question. I would, I would, or I would answer just one part of it. Uh, that was something my supervisor picked up. So on the day, I I had a notebook at hand, and when they were asking a question, I scribbled down roughly what they were asking so that I remembered to answer both parts. Um, and so I think just little things like that were, were helpful. I was going to say the. Um... The, the fact that it was online, I, I felt personally actually made those pauses a bit more justifiable. And I, I guess it was a bit of a case of if I stay really still, they'll just think the connection's frozen and that'll give me, <laughs> <laughs> that'll give me some time to think about this question that I don't know how to answer or, or, or something like, something like, um, there were a few times when I'm, I'm, I'm sat, I was sat where I am now and there's a window just over, over to my left hand side and just to, have a quick stare out of the window to ponder what I might be, what I might say to the, to the, uh, to the, the examiners, um, which is fine unless you notice someone doing something really interesting across the road, then you might get a bit distracted. But yeah, so I, I felt that that remote side of things was actually, actually quite a good thing for me personally, because um, it allowed me to almost detach myself a little bit from the, from the situation and reflect. So, yeah. It's really interesting hearing all of your experiences um, in in Viva um, and how it's similar but different and some of the real positives of being able to do uh, your Viva online. Um, so I know there was a lot of anxiety, quite rightly, with everybody at the start of all of this about how we make sure that students are able to uh, perform as, as well as they can uh, in remote fivers and it's really lovely to hear from all of you uh, about your experiences of that. It's also really nice to kind of realise that you know part of what's happening in the pandemic is it it's kind of made us all a little tiny bit more human hasn't it so um, yeah. so thinking about people's rooms um, uh, how how things are set up that um, the, the cat might come in or in my case it might be the dog barking um, or children might come in because we're all human and, and these things happen. Uh, and that's just more evident, I think now, uh, in ways that, um, that can feel reassuring. Could you talk about how, how the end of your Viva felt for you and what you did and any tips you have for other students? The, the obvious thing is it, you know, your, result, your results quite, quite important uh, in terms of what you might want to do afterwards which it's worth thinking about how you might feel um depending on what the outcome is um so if you feel like you might need to have a debrief or or want some support from someone it, if it goes well or if it goes badly um, that's something that i think that takes a bit more thinking about because you're not like you said Lindsay, you're not automatically going to have people around like you would in a face-to-face -face where you can go back into the, the department that you're in and everyone, you know, has a glass of whatever and and, and has a nice chat, um, or hopefully a nice chat. In relation to doing it online, it's another aspect that for me was a positive because I wasn't necessarily looking forward to the um, experience of having your Viva and then going back and chatting to people and, and saying, oh, yes, well done, or, or, oh, sorry, that went like that or whatever. I wasn't particularly looking forward to that. It wasn't there wasn't a, a big deal made out of it by other people because no one else really knew that it was happening um so for me that was quite nice to go under the radar um but some people might want the absolute opposite some i completely understand some people would want a big celebration so yeah just having to think about what what you might prefer really um and making sure the support's there if you want it or you have a bit of quiet time to reflect or or sleep for three days or whatever you want to do um afterwards I think my I, I think Daniel and I are, are quite similar in that you know you obviously said about going under the radar and I'd sort of said earlier about 
Um, nobody really knew when it was because I'd, I'd kept it very quiet because I didn't want masses of messages and, you know, before or after, really. I kind of wanted it to be on my terms um, as much as I could, um, just because that that's my coping mechanism. I was also, it was quite early on in lockdown for me, so it was still the very strict lockdown. Um, and because I live on my own, there wasn't anybody to, you know, give me a hug and say, well done. And I actually... Um, I had my birthday the week before and it was a, a birthday with a zero on it. And um, and then I had the Viva, you know, and, and there was no one to give me a hug for another month. Um, and so that was quite hard. Um, so, yeah, I think hopefully, you know, going forward, people doing it in these circumstances will have some element of being able to see people um, and have some kind of acknowledgement of it. So even if you don't want a big party, just having someone around to go, well done and give you that pat on the back or whatever um you know that that was quite difficult um and again it was um I I kind of I spoke to the two supervisors who weren't in the in the Viva um so I rang them and I rang a couple of other people and then um I I marked a few essays in the afternoon <laughs> so, <laughs> so I also just got on with my day <laughs> um so uh yeah then I had a a drink in the evening and um I was doing a virtual pub quiz with my friend that was already scheduled that evening and she didn't she didn't know until you know after I'd had the vibe I messaged her and said oh you better make sure you've got a glass or something this evening so so yeah so it was it was definitely a weird experience and there are definitely pros and cons to that um so I also don't like being in the limelight so in that sense it was quite nice but but yeah, I didn't get to have the kind of informal chat with the examiners afterwards. Um, you know, it was all kind of like, well, that's like done. And then the, the Skype call ends and, you know, that that's it kind of thing. So, you know, being able to plan it a bit more in advance now, I think it will be helpful for students now going through it. They can plan what they want to do a bit more. Yeah, I mean, mine was uh, slightly later in lockdown. So there was <clears throat> we were allowed to sort of be in the, in the same space as a few other people at that point. Um, I, I had a few people that, that were aware. I didn't have lot, not the whole world certainly wasn't aware, but I had a few people that were aware. Um, I rang my second supervisor um, as soon as the, the call was over just to give her an update. Um, and I then had a, a, another call with my main supervisor who'd been in the in the Viva um and and sort of just chatted that through with her uh and had a bit of a you know well done and then i'm i'm afraid i did crack open the the um the bubbly uh with a few friends on the front lawn of my house um and uh and that was very enjoyable but it, you know the, the, then there was a period in the afternoon when i just was exhausted and actually the following day i think taking booking the time off work is a really, really sensible thing to do, even if you have to take it as annual leave. Um, because I think that the following day I was very tired. Um, I think you don't realise it, it, it. In one sense, it was like mine was about an hour and 40 minutes, I think, in total. Um, and then the feedback, so probably two hours altogether. And and you think, gosh, it was just two hours, but actually it's exhausting. Um, and so I had a very lazy afternoon. Um, and then I had the following day off as well. And I think that really helped just to kind of um, and process it all, I think. I think I hadn't realised quite how significant it would feel to finally do it um, and and to go, gosh, you know, I, I know I've got some amendments to do, but to all intents and purposes, I've I've just passed my doctorate. Um, and I just, yeah, just kind of processing how significant a moment that was in my career um, was something I, I hadn't quite expected it to feel quite so emotional, and it did. Um, so I think, you know, just allowing yourself a bit of time to, to go, gosh, that, that was, that was good. I did something really quite, you know, significant today is, is just allow, allow yourself to just bask in it a little bit, I think is, is worth just thinking about. Please don't apologise for having opened the champagne. I think that that is, uh, you know, I think that's yeah, nobody extreme. needs to know how much was drunk, do they? <laughs> it's just wonderful because you can really see how doing a, PhD or an EDD or a doctorate in health and social care is is transformative, isn't it? It is for all of us, and that's why I absolutely love my job is that I can um, I, I can do a little tiny bit to help you all out with that. Thank you very much, Claire, Sue, and Daniel. Um, I really enjoyed the conversation. Um, it's great to hear your experiences and um, your suggestions for students who will be taking their vivas very soon. Uh, I, I hope that uh, students have found that very helpful. Mm -hmm.